It's Mailbag. I'm Perry. I'm Jeff. This is Jeff. We're having a day here. It's a big day because it is the end of the year. It is the end of 2018. This Thank is your God. last edition of Collider Mailbag for the year, but then we are going full steam ahead into 2019, and it's going to be awesome. But, Jeff, do you know what the plan is for today? No. <laughs> yes, you do. You're one of the most prepared mailbag pundits I have. Uh, no, I, I do know what's going on. We got some good questions yes. to, to uh, end the year on a high note, so to speak. It's true. And uh, should we get right into it? I think we should. All of these questions are end of the year themes. So we're going to take this opportunity to celebrate some movies and some talent that we really loved in 2018. Jumping into it today with an email question. This question comes from Stephen Vo, who writes... Greetings, mailbag crew. What are some recent performances this year that stood out to you, even though their roles were very small? The one that sticks out to me is Aaron McCusker in Bohemian Rhapsody, who played Freddie Mercury's real-life boyfriend, Jim Hutton. I thought he and Rami Malek sold their connection and chemistry in the very, very little we got of their relationship in the film. A bit of a shame. I would have loved to have seen more of their relationship as much as I love the movie. Any other examples? You got a list. Yeah, he, he was actually really good in Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. So so uh, good question there, Stephen. Um, do, I mean, is this do the roles have to be super small, or can it just be people who were kind of overlooked this award season? This is all about celebration of movies in 2018. So I'd say go for either. Okay, then I'm gonna say, uh, and I said her name once before on an episode of FYC, I think Dolly Wells in yeah. Can You Ever Forgive Me, who's the the woman that you know you can kind of tell Melissa McCarthy has a crush on, and can and can and can you ever forgive me? She was really wonderful. It's a very understated performance too. Yep, yep. I but I really enjoyed it. Life itself is a movie that kind of got destroyed by critics and and uh, deservedly so for the most part. But in the second half of the film, I really enjoyed Sergio Perez Manchetta. Um, who, who, you know, dominates sort of the, the Spanish-speaking scenes. Uh, I really like Nikel Smith in mid-90s. Yes. He was great. Uh, and Geraldine Viswanathan, or Viswa- Viswanathan, Vis- Viswanathan, I'm never <laughs> sure how to pronounce it, uh, but uh, she was great in Blockers. I also really liked her in The Package. Yeah. Um, she just has, like, a really bright career. Yeah, uh, this is a good opportunity for anybody out there who knows to tell us how to pronounce her name because, mark my words, that's a name you're going to want to know. She's just got she's got something special to her, something that makes her really she stand had that it factor so yeah th- th- those are my four uh, anybody on your list i've got two on my list and i went with the just little amount of screen time but but big presence uh route to this question and the first one i have is a movie that i rewatched recently and i knew how awesome he was the first time i saw the movie he really stuck in my mind but in rewatching it recently i still can't believe that i have this reaction winston duke in black panther <laughs> He, he really is just something else. When you watch the movie and you tally up the amount of minutes he has on screen and what he does with them, it's really kind of incredible. The second Umbaku steps into the frame, he completely commands your attention. Winston Duke in particular almost like fills the entire frame of the, of the screen just with his big personality. And when you think about him only having, I think it's something like three scenes. It's like after what he does in the movie, his big payoff in the third act battle, it shouldn't feel that important, but it does. And I think it's because he makes the most of every single second we see him in that Yeah, movie. him and Letitia Wright were my up-and-comers of the yeah. month for February. I thought he was terrific. He developed that call and response thing with, with uh, Ryan Coogler to, to work on that character. Uh, so that's a nice choice. Who's the other one? Letitia Wright is also one of my my favorite, I I guess I would say favorite new talents of the mm-hmm. year because I wasn't familiar with her before, but she's exceptional. My other one is for two movies. Cynthia Erivo in both Bad Times at the El Royale, where she is a lead character, but then also in Widows, where she doesn't have as much screen time, but she really is something else. And I know she's had a major career in the entertainment industry before, mainly with Broadway, but she really just took the best possible step forward in terms of introducing herself to the film industry this year. I really do wish more people out there had seen Bad Times at the El Royale, and and I guess also Widows, too. Widows underperformed a little, right? Yeah. But. I think that no matter what, she is an undeniable talent that we're going to see pop up quite a bit next year and beyond. She definitely makes you like sit up and take notice and be like, who, who is that? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us into our next question? All right, let's do it. Uh, this is an email from Sean Nguyen who says, Hey, Collider, which actor or actress do you believe had the best year? 
My short list of nominees are Josh Brolin, Bradley Cooper, Michael B. Jordan, and Emily Blunt. If I had to pick just one, I'd probably take Emily Blunt. But what do you think? I feel like Emily Blunt is probably the answer. If if whatever you know mathematical data I had, I could add it all up right here. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling it would probably make her the number one. But also when you factor in Emily Blunt and John Krasinski and all the things they have to celebrate this year in terms of A Quiet Place and also beyond. I mean, what what was it? The uh, was it the Golden Globes where they both got nominations? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so they're they're having one heck of a year. I would also put Michael B. Jordan on my list because I really do think he is one of the best MCU villains we've ever seen in Black Panther. And then on top of that, I really loved Creed too. Yeah, and I he thought was really he was great it. in it. I also put Cynthia Erivo back on this list. Another name I have to throw out here is Haley Steinfeld because what a way to close out 2018. Not that I didn't have faith. I mean, you guys know I didn't have faith really in Bumblebee, (laughs) or at least as much as I normally do. But even Spider-Verse, I didn't think that that was going to be a bad movie by any means with all the talent involved. But I still didn't expect either of them to be as good as they are. And for someone like her to really take a risk by jumping into two major franchises with huge fandoms, that could be a scary endeavor. And she wound up picking two great installments that further their franchises forward. I like all those answers, and I like all the names that Sean came up with, too. Uh, Josh Brolin, everybody thinks of Cable or Thanos, uh, but I thought he was great in Sicario, too. Oh, that's true. Uh, So he had had a lot going on. I think my answer this year, though, would have to be Lucas Hedges. Uh, I thought Lucas Hedges was great in both Ben is Back and Boy Erased, and he was also really good in Mm mid-'90s as as Stevie's older brother. So that was a really strong trilogy for me. Same with John C. Riley in The Sisters Brothers. My last little name here was John C. Riley. Stan and Ollie, the Wrecker Ralph sequel. He's so good in Sisters Brothers. Yeah. Uh, he's great in Stan and Ollie too. I think he, he got an, uh, a nomination for that. Uh, I Golden for Globe, those, I think. Yeah, Globes, but um, uh, yeah, Michael B. Jordan, Brolin. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal had a, had a decent year. Uh, maybe I'm just finding excuses to, to bring up Jake Gyllenhaal, um, who was in Wildlife. Oh, and, Wildlife uh, is the one that I'm not thinking he, of. I'm like, well, I know about well, Sisters well, Brothers. Right, Sisters Brothers, exactly. He, he had those two. So there was a lot. Jason Reitman put out two good movies this year between Tully and The Front Runner. That's and it's so like, true. man, he deserves I'm credit for that. They just that. nobody went to see them. Huh. Yeah, they, they maybe grossed like $15 million between them. So that was a good year for Jason Reitman. I feel like you just really nailed it with Lucas Hedges, though. Yeah, he, he, he had a tremendous He year. is having one heck of a year, and it's only going to continue for him. He's Him and Timothy Chalamet, I feel like, are just some of the best of the best in their generation, and they are going to take over. It's LeBron over. and Durant. They're going to push <laughs> each other to the next level. Have they been in a movie? Yeah, they were in a Lady Bird yeah, together. Lady Bird, yeah. But they didn't really get to act with each other, right? right? Did they even meet they're, each they're other They're going to be movie? battling for parts for years. I don't want to see them battle. I want to see them headline a movie together. Come on. No? <laughs> All right. We have another question here. This is an email from LJ Nordvik, who writes... Greetings, clever people. I think you're giving us too much credit. What would be your pick for best product placement in a movie for 2018? You can make the criteria whatever you want. The most discreet, the most appropriate, the most humorous, the most peculiar, etc. My choice would be the Lexus LC500 in Black Panther. That car looks and sounds so much like a big, powerful wildcat. You would think it had been designed for that movie. My best wishes for the new year. It's a tough question, LJ. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Maybe I just don't pay attention to it that much, or maybe I don't consider a product placement some of these things. But I went down the list of movies I've seen, and nothing really really stood out. I mean, besides KFC being all over Green Book, but that's not really product placement because it's like part of the story. You know what I mean? It's not like you can just pay to get your brand in there. Actually, speaking of good product placement in Green Room, and again, LJ said we can bend the rules a little. What did I say? Oh my God, I keep. She always does that. It's because I love that movie. to be talking about Green Room the whole time. <laughs> a little bit, but I do love Green Book. In Green Book, you know when he goes to that that one uh, the one stand alongside the highway and he picks up the rock? Huh? I mean, just have you ever gone to one of those stands and bought a stupid little rock stone gem type no. thing? No. <laughs> I, I vividly remember, especially... Um, 
you know, when, when I when I was in sleepaway camp and we used to go on road trip type uh-huh. things to, you know, like upstate New York, there was always like, you know, crappy little convenience stores and they sold stupid things like rocks. <laughs> and that moment just brought me right back to that and how when you were younger, especially having like a little colored rock actually meant something. And then they make it mean something in the movie. And then I wanted a colored rock. Okay. There's product placement well, for you. I, I, so, I, yeah, I couldn't really think of one. So I came up with a jokey answer to this one. Okay. Uh, because I don't really think KFC counts. <laughs> no, I'm I would say The Happy Time Murders is oh, a movie no. bought and paid for by Big Sugar. Okay? <laughs> it's like Big Pharma, Big Anything, Big Sugar paid for The Happy Time Murders. Oh, boy. Trust me. Okay, okay. I will say that the best pop-up experience I did all year, despite the fact that I did not like that movie, was the one they did for Happy Time Murders. That was actually one of the best movie events I think I went to in 2018. The other things on my list, I'm surprised you didn't, this is the obvious one to me, is Ralph Breaks the Internet, which is Disney product placement all over the place. All over the place, and I think they got away with it just because of the way they naturally work it into how someone uses the internet. Mm -hmm. I feel like every single time something came up as though it was somewhere in the internet, it made sense to me, but in particular, that Disney princess scene is just genius. It's such a beautiful moment that's also, it's super cool for anybody who loves the Disney princesses, but it means something to Vanellope's character. I suppose it's product placement in a sense, but like, is Disney paying themselves? Do you themselves? see the shirts those characters wear? Every young girl out yeah, there, and also myself included, I, I would wear any of those shirts if they manufactured them. It's, yeah, it's, it's all a commercial for, for the rest of their stuff. I just don't know if it, if I would count it as product placement since, since it's not like Disney's paying themselves well, to get LJ it in there. Well, LJ did say we the, can be lenient with fair the Fair enough. There was just, I guess there weren't a lot of scenes where it's like, you know... Uh, like Krispy Kreme like, and Power Rangers? Exactly. Like, you know, Jason Statham's going to go fight a shark in the magazine, but first I need to have a Pepsi. Yeah. Like, there weren't a lot of that thing I feel like things, we, right? we don't get often such heavy-handed things like that. Right, I think the most, more the most heavy-handed now. one recently was probably Krispy Kreme and Power Rangers. But um, actually, here's yeah, one. Here's I saw one, that movie. Stop that. Here's one that I caught this year that I think was a little, uh, a little heavy-handed and didn't work. Did you see Mortal Engines? No. Not that I, I doubt any of you will care, but here is a minor spoiler for Mortal Engines. So actually to backtrack a little, in Mortal Engines, the book, they kind of, you know, because it takes place so well into the future, they idolize certain things we have now as relics. And there's a statue of Mickey Mouse. So obviously mm. Universal had to change that for the movie. So instead they put minions there. And I am someone who loves minions. There's I a am minions a, reference in I Mortal am, Engines. I am a sucker for minions. That was taking it way too far. You cannot put minions on the same level as Mickey Mouse. You just can't. I, I, I'm just surprised they even did that in that the first place. That one bothered place. me. But um, one more thing I want to throw out there. Um, a not really traditional product placement again, but I will say that anything Miles Morales is into in Into the Spider-Verse Made, made me made me want it made me want to go out and to listen to that music made me think his clothes were super cool his hobbies were super cool and that to me is kind of the best form of semi product placement is when whatever a character is doing or into is so cool that you want to do or buy that thing yourself you wanted to buy an animated character's clothing is do i have that right <laughs> It's it's everything about him. Everything everything that you he does. Be Miles his, Morales, he, he wears his style, his attitude. It may it makes you envy a character like that. He's super cool. Go no? Miles. <laughs> go go Miles. All right. Question number four. It's all you. Um, it's an email. It's from Sophia Robles, who writes, Hello, Perry and friends. With all the good and bad movies this year, let's celebrate the surprise of the year, which is the movie you watched with low expectations or that you had no desire to watch for some reason, but it turned out to be one of the best experiences for you or even one of your top ten of the year. For me, it was the new Halloween movie. I'm not a horror lover yet, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of hard for me to watch this genre in general, but I took a chance with this one, and it paid off. I truly enjoyed it. Happy holidays and drink responsibly. (laughs) Thanks for the tip. That's Uh, Andy Perry, obviously. This... This was the easiest question on the list Mm -hmm. because the second I read it, I knew exactly what my answer had to be and it was Bumblebee. You you all well know the back and forth that's been happening for years between uh, me and John Roca with how much he loves it and how much I don't like many of the Michael Bay movies, really all but the first one. And it's not that I went into Bumblebee thinking, oh, here we go again, because I knew it was a different filmmaker, a slightly different spin, a different approach, a different budget, but I never expected it to be as good as it is. That movie came really, really close to... 
I'm close to cracking my top 10, firmly in my honorable mentions. The relationship mm. between Charlie and Bumblebee just completely won over my heart. And there were certain moments in this that it, it was just some of the sweetest, most heartwarming stuff. Like when they play that prank, I must have been just like in a puddle of tears. I was laughing so hard. I, I guess Bumblebee wasn't a surprise for me because I, I thought it looked really good right out of the gate. Yeah. As soon as they showed that first trailer, I, I had faith in it. Um, the Rider, I think, was a movie for me that I didn't really want to see and mm -hmm. didn't want to believe was good and thought it was just critics, you know, going overboard. But I, when I did sort of drag myself to see it, it was absolutely incredible. And, and that will be on my top 10 uh, this year. But, I, you know, I've talked about The Rider a lot. Uh, so so my official answer to this question is We the Animals. Did you, did you catch that? Documentary, right? No. Wait, or which one are we talking about? Uh, oh no, no, this is the the Evan Peters one. No, that's American Animals. Oh my God, I'm confusing. I know, all and the, the the same now. same distributor, The Orchard. Uh, but We the Animals was from uh, Jeremiah Zagar, and, and it's about like three boys, yeah, and, and three brothers, and their father sort of abandons them, and and, it, and it's just features like a. It has wonderful imagination. It's kind of like the Beast of the Southern Wild of this year, if you will. Uh, and so We the Animals is the movie that I would tell you guys to check out. I know it's going to sound a bit maybe like home work or you're like oh is this is this really going to be good i think that it will win you over in the end i flat out really did think this was a documentary like, oh, yeah, no, as i sort my screeners as they come in i just divide them into piles and i'm pretty sure this one is sitting in the documentary pile right now yeah, I, think the, I, the I don't dad know why it, i think it's the guy from seven seconds possibly i forget What's now i need to watch this oh, yeah. Ra yeah raul castillo cool uh, anyways all right let's we we got one last one question more. in 2018 this has got to be a good question. one Barry. It, it, it is a good one i'm really happy this one came in because i know we both uh, love doing this. Um, this is a Facebook question from Joanne Hazenor, who writes, what was your most memorable interview of 2018? Okay. You can have a long list because I have a long list. Well, you you have probably done more interviews than I have um, since I pretty much just do the up and comer of the month thing. But I did get away actually with doing an interview here at Collider that wasn't for up and comer of the month. It was a very unique interview. It was when I talked to Tony Greenhand. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't think of that from, first for from you. From the Gus Van Sant jo Joaquin oh, Phoenix wow. movie, Don't Worry, You Won't Get Far on Foot. Uh, th this is a kid who, who had never really acted before. Uh, he was discovered on Instagram by Gus Van Sant, and he is known as the world's greatest joint roller. And we had him in the studio at this desk over here, which you can't see. Didn't he, he give you a really he, expensive yeah, joint, Yeah, he, he rolled us. He rolled a <laughs> joint uh, that, that, that I, I may have indulged in uh, in the middle of the work day with some colleagues oh, yeah. um and, and it was a good interview to boot and yes on the on the way out he was like man i'm, I'm so grateful because the only press he had done uh was really for his joint rolling skills no one was really you know taking interest in his acting career mm. um and, and so he gave me the, this gift and it was a a bender statue from futurama yes. that was made out of marijuana i mean he sells these things for like you know thousands of dollars they're like art pieces that people commission him to make uh, so that that was very special to me, and, and we've stayed in touch. And I actually, I'll break a bit of news on this show right now. Let's to, hear it. I, to, Tony signed with uh, Luba Rockland Entertainment. Huh. He got a manager. I, I set him up on a tour of the town nice. with some, some management folks that I know. And, yeah, he got signed uh, recently, and hopefully they'll find him an another job in 2019. We'll see more of Tony Greenhand because he's a, a good guy. What a cool story. Because, like, your story is really cool because that's not even just a, you know, a blip on the radar memory of 2018. Right. Like, you could have just changed the course of his career. Uh, I, I, ho I, ho cool. I hope I did for a, a little bit, but That's you know what? Cool. He, he's a good guy and he deserves it. I like the sound of that. What All about right. you? To kick off my list here, <laughs> I think my, fa my favorite interview of 2018 just happened recently and it turned into my favorite for reasons that I never would have expected. You know what a spoonerism is, right? I mean, everyone out there at this point knows that I have this weird obsession with them. Wait, a spoonerism? Spoonerism. Is that? No, I don't it's, know. It's when you take the first letter of two words and you reverse them. So instead of Jeff Snyder, you would be Steph Jider. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm fascinated by them and I'm so fascinated by them that sometimes I'll say them by accident. All right. <laughs> and it's weird. Anyway, I'm busy doing my Vice interview with Amy Adams and we're maybe 30 seconds into the interview and instead of saying Dick and Lynn, she goes Lick and Din and I freaking lost it. I got to explain to her what a spoonerism is. All the people that were monitoring in the other room were hysterical. Hands down one of my favorite moments. Um, another weird. one I would add to the list is uh, getting to host that 
Impulse panel at San Diego Comic-Con. After so many years of going to Comic-Con, it was always like the ultimate dream to have my name on one of those placards and to be up there and in particular doing it for that show impulse was really special because it is a really cool show i know it got a little bit a little bit of a bad rap before it started up because oh it's the jumper spinoff or whatever but they really do a good job of making that show its own thing and they have a couple of very very talented performers on that Mm -hmm. too should I, go, I have like an epic I, list. I want the whole list. Uh, All right, then, maybe it'll jog some stories. Uh, Lady Gaga. I've you got been, to interview Gaga. It was that's, for, for A Star is Born. That's pretty cool. And it's just like standing outside of her room for that junket. Every uh-huh. single person was like, oh my God, I'm talking to Lady Gaga. I'm right. about to talk to Lady Gaga. And she was wonderful. Uh, Tony Todd, realizing that one of my cool. favorite horror icons also shares my love of cats was very important. It's a cat lover. And I a actually, gentleman. He, he's so sweet. And I actually think that our first uh, guest on The Witching Hour in 2019 is probably going to be Tony Todd. Oh, okay. I am so pumped. Um, ben Mendelsohn is wonderful. And when I was talking to him, he had said something about about just no matter what you're doing, whether you're acting or you're doing an interview, just the importance of being present. Mm -hmm. And he specifically had related it to interviews because have you ever done like that TV junket rotation where you're being rotated into talent's room and it's like they're doing God knows how many interviews, four minute interviews with a million people probably hearing the same question over and over. And his comment was something along the lines of like, so be it. If you're in the moment and you feel it and you make it your own and you're present for it, that's what's going to make your life great. I like him. I've interviewed him before. He was wonderful. And then I think one of my favorite interview Our videos. Favorites. Our favorite? Right. Well, this one, yeah, this is a joint one. Um, the eighth grade interview we did with Bo Burnham and Elsie Fisher. One, that movie is firmly in my top ten. Actually, at the point that this video runs, everyone will know. It's, it's up in my top five. But that video we did with them where they give us office advice yeah. was so much fun, and they were so good at it. They, they were great. That, that was definitely one of the more memorable interviews uh, or you know, celebrity interactions that I've had this year for sure. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. I think year. that's it. That's it. That's all we've got. We made it. Oh, man. We've made it to the end of 2018. Thank you for being on this journey with us. Jeff, thank you for being here today. I thank hope you, you have this the happiest new year. It's been a delightful time uh, spending the last six months here at Collider. And, and here's to making more memories in 2019 Absolutely. with the rest of you crazy cats. I love the sound of that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful New Year's Eve tonight. Celebrate safely and wishing you all the best in 2019. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.